blah, blah, blah. What's up, everybody? It's your friend Isaac from Big Bike BMX and my trusty cohort, Craig. What up, Craig? Yo, what's up, everyone? What's up, Isaac? Oh, How's man. It going, brother? Dude, it was a long day at work. Let me just tell you right now. I'm a little bit, I'm a little bit tired, but it's cool because I'm hyped about this interview. So this is yeah. one that we've, we've talked about doing for quite a while. Um, and I think the timing right now is, is damn near perfect to have this conversation, especially with the sport growing like it is. Um, I think this is probably one of the best things we could possibly do right now is have this conversation with this specific guest. What do you think? No, I, I totally agree, bro. The timing's perfect. Where we're at's perfect. You know, what's going on in the world's perfect as far as this timing. And, uh, you know, without further ado, I want to introduce you to our guest. Uh, and I want all the listeners to uh, take notice here because we have a very, very special guest tonight. Um, we have from Santa Cruz, California, the Santa Cruz Maniacs, the organizer of one of the most incredible, if not the most incredible, and most popular and famous ride outs in the bike life world, Mr. Tom Loughran uh, from Santa Cruz. Tom, welcome to the show. Glad to have you here, bud. Hey, thanks for having me, guys. I really appreciate it. Super stoked about this. Um, can't tell you enough how excited I was when you guys asked me to do this and, and be able to share, you know, some of my stories, some of my wisdom, you know, what we've lived through here in Santa Cruz, what we've seen how I've seen this bike life evolve and I'm just really excited to be able to share my story and, and be able to chop it up with you guys. Yeah, that's for sure, man. And we are stoked to have you here. You know, Tom, it's, uh, it, it, it's, it's part of the bike life scene to, uh, if, if, if you're on a big bike BMX or if you're, you're on a smaller bike or if you're, you're anywhere in this scene, you know what bike life is or you know what a ride out is, or maybe you haven't been on one, but you're going to go on one. And we think there's none greater to talk to uh, at this time, like Isaac said, than, than yourself, man. So uh, again, welcome and, and so stoked you're here. Uh, so, you know, I just want to get the, the conversation started. Let's, let's kick it off. I was just going to get a, you know, Tom, um, I just want to kick the whole conversation off with you know, obviously, as, as my intro stated, you know, you're, you've got probably the most popular, most successful ride out um, that's going on today in bike life all across the world, country, anywhere um, that I know of. So I just want to say, you know, kudos to you, man, because I've been on your ride out like it's I think this year was my third or fourth Santa Cruz ride out. Man, it's incredible. If you guys haven't been out there, you need to check it out. You can, if you haven't been yet, go to Google, go to, go to uh, Tom's page um, and, and check it out. But can you, um, can you just kick off this whole thing about your ride out, where it started for you and how you got into bike life as far as, you know, your experience and then how that led into the, the whole ride out thing in Santa Cruz? Yeah, boy, that's a long story, but absolutely. Um, you know, the, the, the bike life thing, We've been doing it before it was bike life, right? And you got to thank Damon Dayton for that. Damon, there's your shout out, motherfucker. <laughs> Sorry about that, guys. But for real, if it wasn't for him, you know, I think it was 2012, something like that. He calls me up one night and says, hey, you got to come look at these bikes I just bought. He had just bought his daughter, a SoCal Flyer. He bought his first big ripper, which was a 2010 white one. And he bought that money bike, that OM Flyer, right? And uh, I went over to a friend of ours house where he was at and, and I'm just blown away because that was my roots, you know, growing up as a kid, a lot of the people that are younger than me, younger than us, grew up on mountain bikes. We grew up on BMX bikes, right? I, I mean, that was our culture. That was how we got around. That was how we did everything as a kid, right? So, I mean, it was that instant, oh my God, I can be a kid again, you know, feeling, yeah. right? And uh, Damon was was uh, dumb enough to let me ride one of his bikes, <laughs> right? <laughs> you know, and, and from there, um, it was on. I mean, it, it was literally on. I, I couldn't wait to get one. I, I was fiending for it. Um, we kind of found this, you know, thing together. We started, you know, riding together, even though, you know, Damon's in Stockton. I'm in Santa Cruz. You know, Damon and I have been friends for over 25 years, and um, we've done a lot of things in life together. This is one of many, and th this has been one of the, the things I think that both of us are most proud of is where we've been, 
and where we came in this bike life world and what we've created with it, you know, but uh, we started riding and we got turned on, you know, we, we heard about these things called a ride out, you know, and it was like a ride out. What's that? We went down to our first ride out in, in LA. It was a 4130 subway ride, um, the subway series ride. And it was the actual subway ride down in LA, you know, at the, that's the time we met Todd Lyons. We met D blocks and had the absolute time of our life. I mean, it was really not just feeling like a kid again, but feeling like we were part of something. You know what I'm saying? And the big thing for me and Damon as well, wasn't just that it was us doing it. We were actually getting to share it with our kids. You know, he had his daughter Skylar with him and, and his wife, Rosie. I had my daughter, Kaya, my son, Keith, and my wife, Krishna. And we went down as a, as a family to experience this. And we left there just blown away. I mean, we had the time of our lives. There was about 400 people. It was the biggest thing I'd ever seen, right? And I was just like, wow. And it was so organized and so smooth. And then we come back up to Northern California and we don't have anything, you know? I mean, really, we don't have anything. And, and that's for a lot of reasons. You know, I'm, I'm kind of a child of history. I like to look back and see what, why, where, and how, you know? And, and what I figured out over time was that our culture up here was very different than the culture down in Southern California. The culture in Southern California was still rooted in BMX. You still had guys, we saw guys out there on 20 inch bikes, little 16 inch mini bikes, hanging with the big bikes, riding, having fun. And the BMX culture was strong. We're up here in Northern California, we have more of a mountain bike culture, right? It's where mountain biking was invented, right? So it was a little different, but there's still us old heads up here that come from that BMX world that, that, that were yearning for that. So, you know, it was one of those things where we wanted to bring that culture up here. We wanted to see what happens if we introduce this, you know, where we're at. And it was, you know, it took time. We went down to several rides down there because when I, when I get into something, I want to understand it. I want to understand what makes it tick, what makes it go. And you know, Cheech, Eric, thank you very much. I know it was a pain in your guys' ass down there. But I used to go down to these rides all the time, and I would ask a million questions. Why do you do this? How come you do this? How come you meet here? Why do you do that? Trying to understand what their formula was for their success and what they were doing, because I wanted to show my friends and my family up here the fun that we were having down there, right? And uh, fast forward to 2000 and. 15, late 15, early 16, you know, Damon and I had decided early on that we weren't going to try to put on rides, that we were just going to embrace this culture, travel, support what anybody else was doing, and a little group came up out of Sacramento called the 6061 BMX ride, and they, you know, and funny thing, this was before I was into Instagram, but I'm looking on Craigslist one day, and I see an ad for a BMX ride out, Oh my goodness, a BMX ride out in Sacramento. So I hit up Debo. Hey, Damon, we got to go to this, right? So we go up to the ride, have the time of our life. You know, I think there was maybe 40 people there, you know, when we showed up. And I think we brought 20 of them, <laughs> you know, <laughs> honestly, to the, to the ride. But it was one of those things that we could see it growing. We could see the, the seed happening. Somebody else was doing it. They, you know, they were putting it on. And it was easy to support that. Well, as time went on over the next several months, you know, we've supported more and more of their rides and we got more and more involved. Damon got really involved with those guys just by proximity to um, Sacramento and what was going on up there. But we were supporting all their stuff. And right around mid-2016, I was introduced to a guy named Jason Scott. Jason's the guy that... Um, kind of the, the president, head of the 6061. And Jason lives, lives over here three or four days a week and works. So him and I start riding together every day. And just in riding every day with my son, Keith and Jason. And, and we had one other guy here in Santa Cruz, one wheel, Cody. First guy on a wheelie in Santa Cruz, by the way. And uh, nice. we, we, you know, we all started hanging out and riding together pretty regular. And, and we thought to ourselves, you know, we're like, you know, we ride every night. 
Why don't we do a Craigslist post, right? Why don't we do this? So that's where our, our Wheelie Wednesday started, our Wednesday Night Ride started. And uh, we're about to go into our fifth year um, consistently of doing our Wednesday Night Rides. Um, first night we went out, there was four of us. It was me, Jason, Keith, and Cody standing at the lighthouse, laughing, having a good time like we always did. You know, and, and, I, and the comment was honestly made, I wonder if anybody's ever going to come out and join us. Oh, you know? <laughs> and, uh, oh, boy. <laughs> did you not know what was coming? And, you know, oh. that's one of the things, Tom, like one of the things I wanted to talk to you about, and we can get into it in a minute, but, you know, it's like I happen to just feel like there's other people who are now like currently in the situation that you were back in 2012 through 2016 going, man, I want to start a ride out in my hood. I want to, I want to get people together. I want to do this. I just don't know what to do, how to do it, where to start, who I contact. I mean, you had the challenges of not, you know, going through Instagram or, or Facebook, you know, you were posting on Craigslist, um, to try to communicate. So, I mean, but you and Damon and the people that you were involved with were like, dude, we're going to do this, man. If we see this happening down South and we can see it in Sacramento, what a perfect spot to do it where we live out in, in Santa Cruz. Right. And a couple other guys I've talked to that have started ride outs and organized ride outs. The thing that they said that just connects with what you just said is like, once you start it, you may only have yourself and maybe one other person or couple, you know, you're not going to have the 40, 50, 60 people on night one, but you got to be consistent. You have to show up. And if you're going to do it every Wednesday night, make it every Wednesday night and show up every Wednesday night, you know, and who knows, it could just be yourself or it could be one or two, three people. But, um, and like, so that, I mean, your motivation is probably like a lot of folks out there are just trying to like f figure out like, how do I get this started? And, you know, really, seeing you and what we know the Santa Cruz ride out has become it's humbling. And it's also like refreshing to hear that you started back when you did with just the hopes of having fun with your friends and family. And that was the beginning of your ride out in Santa Cruz. You know, it wasn't like I'm trying to get the masses of thousands of people out here. It's like, I just want to go ride with the people who like to ride. Yeah. Uh, yeah, absolutely. And, 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 you know, you're right about the consistency, Craig. That's, a, that's the biggest key factor in all of this is if you're going to do something, the consistency is the number one thing that you really have to have. If you say you're going to be there at six o'clock, be there, and I'm horrible at that, and everybody's going to laugh when they see this, <laughs> right? But be there at six o'clock, you know, be there on time, show up, be there every Wednesday, be there every Saturday, whatever that time is, and, and give some, you know, give them something to look forward to because they're going to tell a friend that friend's going to tell a friend they're going to come out, you know, and when we first started doing it, we weren't looking. It was exactly what you said. We just wanted to find like-minded people to go ride with. Right. And it wasn't a, Oh, we're going to do the biggest thing in the world. Although um, that's always in the back of my mind, whenever I get involved with things is, is, I'm one of those kooks that has to figure out how I can go bigger, <laughs> better, faster. Right. Right. And, you know, and, and Damon knows that Damon and I've done enough Volkswagen events and motorcycle events together over the years that, you know, you know, he laughs, he, he might come up with an idea and then he'll toss it my way and he knows, okay, we're, you know, he's going to blow it up. You know, he's going to figure out a way to blow this thing up. And, and we work well together in that regard. And, but yeah, we never intended it to turn out to what it is. Now, that being said, from day one, my goal was to have more than 400 people at a ride out because I saw 400 people at a ride out <laughs> down in LA, right? <laughs> you know, I mean, <laughs> it was that simple. But I knew we had to start somewhere and I knew consistency was the key. Um, you know, and, and the other part of it is be accepting. You can't turn people away. You can't look down at people. You know, if they show up and they want to be, they want to hang out with you. I mean, we're all kooks, right? You know, right. In, in one way or another. So you can't judge people. You can't, you just got to accept everybody. You know, it doesn't matter what color they are, what walk of life they're from, how old they are, you know, what their situation is. You bring them in like their family. And that's where the whole bike life family thing came from, right? 
is we, we, we treat everybody how we want to be treated, right? We, we come together, and even if it's for three hours on a Wednesday night or whatever that is, those three hours, we're a family. We're together, right? And we're out yeah. having fun doing what we love. You know, and that that was the, the key, the consistency, treating people how you want to be treated, you know, and then obviously making it fun, you know, and, and that was, I think a lot of people lose that because they're so worried about, let's have a ride out now, you know, have fun, regardless if you've got one, two, or a hundred people, have fun with it, you know, no attitudes, just go out, make it a fun ride show them things. If you're doing a ride in your city, this is one of my pet peeves. Show them what you're proud of in your city. Show them what's cool to you in your city. Don't just drag them down main streets and, and, and screw up traffic. I mean, for me, I like to go out on our Wednesday night rides. I get to show people that come out Santa Cruz like they've never seen it, right? And I can't do that on my big ride because there's just places I can't fit a thousand, two thousand, three thousand people <laughs> into. It just doesn't work. But on our small rides, I like to take them around and I like to give them that thrill. You know, go to the places that we go to, go through the cuts that we go through, you know, and then they feel like they've experienced something, you know. So you, you make it about experience, you make it about fun, be consistent. And, and just be loving and, and open, you know, to everyone. That's the key right there. What, what would you say, Tom? That's, and that's great advice. So it's, you know, be consistent, be open-minded, uh, you know, be welcoming of everyone. And, you know, make sure that you kind of have a planned route that makes sense to, to someone besides yourself, right? Yeah. Um, and then how, what would, as far as like growing, growing your ride, because let's say like we have a local Phoenix ride. There's two of them. There's the, the Copper State BMX Cruisers, and then there's uh, BMX Ballers. The Ballers, yeah. Yep. They both, they both, do, they both do rides. Um, they both go different places every couple weeks. Um, what advice would you give someone like Jason from BMX Ballers um, as far as like, what, would, what advice would you give him to grow that weekly ride? Because there's, there's kind of two things I want to touch on. The weekly rides, and then if somebody wanted to organize like a one, like let's say, I want to, here's a good example. I want to organize a birthday ride in December. Not a big thing. I don't want to, I don't want to thousands of people, but I do want to do like a big bike BMX ride in, in Southern California um, with, with as little planning as I possibly can. I'd like to know your advice uh, for, for someone like myself that just wants to have one, a one-time ride out. What like that's, that's kind of the, the stuff I'd like to hear about too. Yeah, no. So for somebody like a Jason, Mm -hmm. You know, and what they're doing, obviously, they're, I don't know if there's competition between the Copper State guys and the ballers out there. I don't know the dynamic. There's but none. It sounds like you have two groups out there kind of vying for some of the same turf, right? Kind of doing the same thing. My advice to Jason would be work with the other group, yeah. right? Get involved. Go to their rides. And, and that's the other thing. If, if you want to be successful, and you want people to come to your ride and be respectful of your area and what you're doing, you got to go do the same thing. You got to go pay those dues. So if I were a Jason, I would make sure I was going out to their rides. I'd be supporting their stuff. I'd be reposting their stuff. I would be promoting their stuff and in, in turn, so they would do the same for you, right? Because here's the thing. We're always stronger together, right? When we separate or we've got two or three or four or five little groups running, now you're buying for the same group of people doing the same thing. But if you come together and you have a, a one common goal and work together, it's going to benefit both groups or as many groups that are in the area. So that would be my, my biggest advice to Jason is just make nice with those guys, do what you got to do, support them, go out. And, and if, they, if they need something, give it to them. You know, I've got a guy right now, you know, and, and we do this quite commonly. We not only will repost other people's rides as we've gotten bigger and we've gotten more notoriety, but when someone new is starting up, and I don't just hand this out to anybody, and not that we're anyone special or what we do is anything special, 
But if I genuinely see somebody that's trying, that's putting in the time and the effort, you know, we're going to support them. We're going to give them product, you know, whatever product we can, how we can to help support and make their ride bigger. Because I know that comes back in spades to us down the road and it makes our whole scene better that way, right? We're cohesive. We're not broken. We're one unit. That's, that, that would be my advice to him. Somebody doing a one-off ride, if you want to do a birthday ride, I mean, you re, or a special occasion ride or once a year ride or something like that, before you do it, put in your head what you want to do. I mean, really consider, do I want 500 people to show up? Do I want 1,000? Do I only want 100? right? Because that all comes down to the cadence of the advertising, right? And if I were going to be planning a ride in December, for instance, I would already have posted said ride. Not that I would have posted any details about it, but you'll notice when we do our ride in August, you're about to see posts start coming out in December for our August ride. I'm going to hit you with one post that's going to say, save the date, right? And most people aren't going to pay attention to that. But then a month later, you're going to see two posts, then three. But for something like you're doing, I would get a post out there. I'd, I'd put my flag in the sand for the day I want to do it. I would say, in general, let's say you were going to do it in Long Beach. We're going to do a ride December 15th in Long Beach. And if that's all the information you want to give out at the time, that's it. But then as you get closer, you start ramping up, depending on how many people you want to show up, right? You know, if, if you want to have a big turnout, you really crank the screws up to get on the, on the post. You really crank the screws up going through your network and having people repost your stuff and having people shout you out. And then, you know, depending on the size of the ride you want to have, if it's an intimate thing and you want 100 people, you're not so worried about sponsorship. If you really want to do a big ride, align yourself. Align yourself with a bike company, an apparel company, a local company that wants to help out. Because this thing's getting so big now that everybody wants in the game, right? And if you do it right, you can provide a benefit to the people that are coming, right? We do a raffle at the end of our rides and that benefits our community. But it also benefits the people that come because they'll buy that $2 raffle ticket and they'll want a set of handlebars or a seat or a shirt or something. You know what I mean? So it's exciting. It, it adds to it. And it also gives the companies that want to be involved in this an avenue to be involved in a ride out and to help promote. And then you'll get a company like an SC Racing, a Throne, a JT Racing that's going to throw their heat behind. And again, this comes down to how many people you want. Once you align yourselves with a bigger brand, that's more exposure, more people are gonna show up. If it's a smaller thing, you get it. You know, you kind of scale it in your head to where you want it and you build it out to the size you want it to be, you know? And that that's really would be my advice. Just put your flag in the sand early, have a plan for what you wanna do, have a plan for what you're willing to do, and then you know, make sure you have the components in place before the ride. Some guys like to have a big safety crew. I'm not a fan on a big safety crew. I mean, there's some of these crews out there. I mean, I've seen 30 people on a safety crew. We run the Santa Cruz ride out with like six people. That's it. I mean, that, that's it. But everybody knows their, their part in the game, right? And then prior to the rides, I have multiple rides with my crew so I'm able to lay them out and explain to them where the stops are going to be, where the, where I want to do a catch up. This isn't a stop. This is a slow down area to let everybody catch up. We talk about pace of the ride, you know, before the ride, there's a lot that goes into making it work because if you got somebody out there, that's a sprinter, you're going to lose half your group right out of the box. So you got to stay with pace. But just really put some thought into it, put some time into it, and then go out and, like you guys do, support. Support the other groups. Support the people that you want to have come out. And, and that's really the, the best formula for
for having a successful ride of any size. And then to you, as far as like dealing with like the, the city or the, the local authorities, how do you manage that type of uh, like the police? Because you want to do it in a way that's safe for everybody. You want to do it where, you know, someone doesn't come out thinking it's a family bike ride and then ends up, you know, getting tackled on the, the side of the street because, you know, the, the police don't know what's going on. Do you inform the city ahead of time? Like, hey, this is going on. Do you have any um, advice for that type? Of I think Tom's got some good relations with the city and county of Santa Cruz, bro. I can't wait to hear this, Tom, because I know the day after your ride out, bro, you're probably at the police chief's office like, hey, man, <laughs> here we, we did it again, brother. <laughs> you know? Andy Mills loves me. Uh, <laughs> he does. <laughs> um, so I, I work off a different premise than some. So I, I, um, I've tried both ways. I've, I've approached it. We pulled permits one year um, to do the ride and it created a monster for us. So I work off the premise of beg for forgiveness, don't ask for permission. That being said, um, I also know that doing that, I expose myself. I expose myself to potential litigation. I expose myself to potential issues with the police. But that being said, I also have an open channel of communication with the local police, the local sheriffs, the local council people here. It's kind of that wink, wink, nod, nod kind of a thing with us <laughs> here. Um, no harm, no foul, you know? So that's why I, I'm really adamant. And I, I try to, I try my best and they know this to inform everybody there, please just ignore the cars. We're out of someone's life when we're out there. Now, I know this last year was different. Typically, on a typical ride out, we will inconvenience somebody for 30 seconds to three minutes when we're on the street, if they're in a car, typically. This year was different for us, right? I mean, I think it was closer to like 15 minutes that we messed up traffic. That being said, Make sure you know who your chief of police is. Make sure you know who the sheriffs are. Make sure that you're not coming at them with an attitude, right, when you do these things. And for the most part, they understand what we're doing. We're not out breaking stuff. We're not out vandalizing, destroying, graffitiing. We're out riding our bikes, having a really good time and smiling. They, the cops see this. They get that vibe, right? I will tell you, that every year we get complaints. Every year we get complaints. Um, this last year we had a little over 200 complaints that were called in to the Santa Cruz PD. And when I go down and talk to the chief of police, one of the first questions, because I do, I want to know, you know, how bad was it? <laughs> you know, what, <laughs> yeah. uh, how about okay. it? How much trouble am I in? And, you know, one of the first questions I ask is, what were the complaints? And what I find is that with the exception of one incident, not this last year, but the year before, all of the complaints that we've ever had have been what are considered nuisance complaints. In other words, somebody's picking up a phone and they're calling because they're in their car and they can't get across town and they're pissed, right? Or we rode by their house and we made noise or whatever the case may be. So they're nuisance complaints. The cops put zero importance behind those. We haven't done anything. The only time they get excited is when, and I don't want to say kids, these people, because what happens is we have a mob mentality that, that goes on. When you get that many people together, whether it's 50, 100, or 1,000, you get this mob mentality where some of these people think that it's okay to act a certain way when it's not, right? And when they start vandalizing cars, hitting cars, destroying property, stuff like that's when it becomes a problem. So one of the things my safety crew does is we police that. We're looking for that. We're looking for the guys that aren't acting right. And we, we'll, we'll tell them, hey, dude, burn rubber. You know, don't ride with us. We're here to have fun. We're here to have a good time. Don't let your good time ruin our good time kind of a thing, yeah. right? And if you're honest and upfront 
most people will respect that. And the, and the local authorities get it. Look, we drive a lot of revenue, you know, in, in our city here. And they appreciate that. We filled every hotel in Santa Cruz this last August, right? We filled the restaurants. They appreciate that. So most cities are going to turn a blind eye to that. Now, that being said, we have recently been approached by several groups, a couple of other cities that want to do rides, that want to do events in their city. They see what we're doing. So now what was once taboo and kind of that um, underground scene, you know, my, my joke used to be, this is our little thing, right? You know, like the mob, mm -hmm. this is our little thing, right? Can't no, use it's that not anymore. our little thing anymore. <laughs> and so a lot more people are wanting to become involved. A lot of, a lot more companies are wanting to become involved. Like I was talking about with the sponsorships. And these are the guys that are willing to work with the cities and work with the promoters like myself to help get these events sanctioned and be able to do them in a city. You know, Santa Cruz is talking about, we have a guy here, Jeremy Stevens, who's a, a local athlete. He plays for the New York Giants and he has a foundation and he's talking about doing a ride with us here in Santa Cruz, a sponsored ride with the city, with the police, with the escorts. So I think to Isaac's point, you know, we're starting to evolve out of the underground thing into a more out in the open thing. And I think more and more of these cities are going to be open to doing this, right? And open to letting groups do an organized event as long as they know we're not going to come in and trash their town. Yeah, right? you, we're not you going to destroy good, their stuff. You brought up a good point, Tom. And it's like, you know, for the thousands of thousands of people who have been on the Santa Cruz ride out over the years, Santa Cruz is not a big town. No. Santa Cruz is actually a pretty small town when you look at it. So the challenges that you have to face of logistics, routes, uh, venues, cleanup, security, safety, um, all those things. And considering- Vampires. Ven <laughs> That's right. Vamp <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You gotta, keep, you gotta be careful. Shout out vampires. to the old people that know what I'm talking about. You know I do, bro. Um, so it's like- you know, and I was just thinking about that, that comment you said, like, hey, man, you know, before it's like we only took up 15 to seconds to three minutes of your life and then, and then we're gone. Then we're, then we're, then we're, we've moved past you. You can, you, your, your green light does mean go this time, you know, and most people and not just your ride out, but from my experiences, it's like, it's like almost all of them are in support and you, even in their car, you can tell from the horn if they support you or if you're pissing them off, you know what I mean? You could tell that horn, like you guys, mm, you know, and they're laying on it and then you get the honk, 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 you know? And it's like, that must transcend to the shop owners, the, the community, the County and all the officials and whoever else is involved. And it's, it's pretty incredible to hear you talk about, <coughs> excuse me, you know, now other cities are seeing this. They're seeing that there's positivity there's community engagement, there's opportunity for the city's revenue, and everybody, it seems like every box is checked with win, 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 you know, like everybody can benefit from this, and it's a good vibe thing to do. Um, Isaac and I have talked, and it's like, you know, in 2020, with everything that's gone down beginning of this year, um, we need things like this, you know, we as a whole, especially in the bike community. And, and I liked how you pointed out in the 4130 back when you started, it seems like it carried over to uh, the bike life and ride out scene. It's like, there's no judgment. All are welcome. All bikes are welcome. All skill levels are welcome. Anything and everything can come and have a good time. And there's instant family, you know, and it, it's, I'm just going to throw it out there for yours. You know, it's like, I was there in August. Um, and it's just an incredible event and, and all ride outs usually tend to be. So, you know, uh, where I'm going with this is like, you've put this together through these hopes and aspirations of bringing people together. And here we are, it, it, it seems, you know, four years later, and you're like you said, going into your fifth year, dude, this thing is, it's grown on its own without anything more than people telling everyone, this is the ride to go to. This is, this is where the, 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 the best location is the best fun we can have. 
um, you know, you got people, I don't know who, if you've heard from a lot of folks, but I'm sure people came from, you know, all over the country, maybe even the world. We have people know? from Australia. We had people from England. We had people from France here. Um, we had people from all over the U.S. Um, hell, I think I had half of the U.S. here in my house staying. <laughs> you know, <laughs> when, when I know I had half of Harlem here. Um, right. You, you know, it's, uh, and, and that's the other thing that, that really, and I never intended this this way. I mean, look, I'm not, I don't look at skin color. I don't look at where you come from. I don't look at what kind of money you make. I don't look at how old or how young you are. You know, I mean, if we click, we click kind of a thing, right? And the one comment that came back to us repeatedly and, and does is the level of diversity that we bring to these ride outs. It's not intentional. That is so organic, and that's what makes this thing so beautiful, is that everybody from every economic walk of life, we've got little kids from four years old all the way up to their, their grandparents out riding bikes, every color of skin, every walk of life, from their faces tattooed to the, you know, head to toe, to the, 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 the squarest guy on the planet, you know, or gal. And everybody comes together, look, we had over 3,000 people here in August. It was crazy. I knew it, dude. I, I was saying, and not to interrupt, I was telling Isaac on another, we did a Santa Cruz ride out wrap up. Uh, and I was like, I think we, I think there was over 3,000 3, people, man. I yeah, mean, yeah, it, it was sure. a great turnout. Phenomenal. Now, let me ask you this. Did you see anybody mad? Did you see anybody having a bad time? I didn't. Hell no. I, I don't see how you could. All you smiles, right? everybody was having a blast no no grief people that didn't know each other from all different walks of life all different places in the world chopping it up together yep. you know having fun because of riding bikes right absolutely there was no, i mean i gotta ask is this a black lives matter thing what is this is this a protest is no we're having fun <laughs> you know they, yeah. you know it has nothing to do with anything other than we're having fun. We're outside. We're riding bikes. We're sharing something that we all love. You know, I mean, diver diversity in bikes, dude. It, it's, I remember growing up uh, in, in Northern California, uh, up in Lodi and Stockton. And if you're riding your bike in the 80s and you see another kid that had like a freestyle bike, like that, that's all you saw was the bike. You didn't necessarily see the person. So you would instantly walk over, like you'd, you'd chase, first you'd have to chase them down and find out like, dude, do you live here? Or are you just visiting like a grandma or something like that? Like <laughs> how, how long is this relationship going to happen between the two of us? Because, you know, the next, the next trick was like, what's your best trick? That was the next question. Like, do you freestyle? Do you do ramp? Do you do flatland? What's your favorite trick? Like, what are the bikes do you have? And so like, that is what I think carries over, especially now as grownups, if I swear to God, dude, I, f I feel sorry for the first person I see in my little town of Gilbert, Arizona, that rolls by on a, on a 29 or a 26 or that's not a mountain bike. Because like, if I'm in my truck, they're going to think the military police are chasing them down because they got a big Hummer flipping, a, you know, flipping around a U in the middle of the street, like me honking and waving, like pull over, pull <laughs> over, you know? Um, because I want to I know you. I want to know who you are. I want to I ride with you. Um, and I think that's what happens on these, these ride outs. It's, it's one of those things. Like I remember being a kid and going like, okay, we're going to Sacramento. And it was like, everyone would pitch in, give like some poor bastard five bucks for gas money. Uh, and then they would drive and you just park somewhere and just like, let's go for a ride and hope we remember. Cause this is before Google, right? So it was like, <laughs> I hope I remember how to get back to the truck, you know? Um, but you would just go ride and, and like, you'd start with three or four and then maybe you'd, you'd catch some skaters and you'd, you'd like roll with the skaters for a bit. And then they tell you about like a secret spot and then you go right there and the pack grew. Um, and I think that's what we're seeing now is just like a little bit more organized because now we're older and we have better tech so we can organize them better. But I think that's what's really happening in, in these big ride outs. And no, no, you're absolutely right. And, and you know, it, it's, it's amazing to me. And, and I will tell you that our introduction of this you know, I talk about that, that first ride out we went out, down on. We pulled into the parking lot um, up there. And, and those of you that have been to the subway ride, 
you know, we're at the corner of Hollywood and Highland, right? We get out the parking lot, we start unloading bikes, and uh, this black kid walks up, grabs my money bike, and wheelies off on it, right? And I'm like, okay, cool. Well, you know who that black kid was? D box. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> and and from that moment on, and I will tell you, it wasn't the way he treated me. It was the way he treated Keith. You know, at the time that that was literally Keith's eleventh birthday on that day. He didn't know that, right? But those two instantly clicked. It was crazy. And before I know it, D blocks is peeling a shirt off of his back and the hat off his head, giving it to this kid. And he just met him, you know? And from that moment forward, I realized, I go, this is something special. This is different, right? This is how life should be, you know? And uh, I, I, man, I, I tell you what, it was one of the most amazing eye-opening moments. Here's a, a, a kid from Harlem meeting a kid from Santa Cruz with absolutely nothing in common except for the bikes. And to this day, they're best friends, right? You know, and, and, and always have been. They, they stayed friends, and that's how we wound up staying linked. And, and since then, D and I have become really good friends. You know, he stays at my house. Whenever he's in town, whenever he, he thinks when he comes to California, <laughs> that that means he's coming to Santa Cruz, right? And staying here, right? You know, he'll call me up. All right, I'm on my way to Cali. Like, where are you going, D? He's like, I'm going to be in LA, but we'll be at your house in a little bit, right? You know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, we'll be at my house in a little bit, right? So you know, it, it's just been really cool to see how it's, it's not just, affected our lives but how it's affected so many people's lives you know and opened up so many people's eyes to how the world should be you know tom that and that's incredible because in, that you brought up d blocks um because there is more to this than the i mean getting together with the the people you love to hang out with the new people that you just haven't met yet the friends that you're going to make the family that you have and everybody being involved because of this thing that we roll around on and pedal is so cool in itself but there is more to this there's there's that you know the bond like with your son with Keith and, and D blocks but for guys like D blocks for guys like on the SE crew uh like Keith and the others there seems to be like there's an outreach there's an outreach for kids getting kids on bikes helping out your community um, you know, like there, there just seems to be another level to this and, and I'm starting to see more and more and I'm sure you are too. And Isaac, it, you know, what, what steps do you see or where do you see things going where, you know, we can use bike life as leverage, not, not as a cash grab, not as a, what can I get? What, what can, you know, someone flow me or whatever, but really what can we do for our communities? You know, cause I see it, it's, it's already there. It's not like it's going to happen. You know, it's just, now it's like, it just seems more apparent that we're doing more for our communities. We're doing more for the kids. We're doing more for those that may not have a chance to be in this, or maybe we have organizations that we're supporting. Uh, you know, like I know that, you know, most people may not know this. It, it, you, you have outreach in your community as well. I'm not sure what it was. I know we've talked about it. Flo loves before. you. Flo loves you. Yeah, they're, they're, they're a real good group here. Um, you know, Nick Hart goes beyond the extra mile for these kids and 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 you know what he does is he he has what we call the skate church here and he helps he's i'm not going to call him at risk youth but his his wheelhouse are kids between about 12 and 15 years old that are getting into becoming a teen that preteen, that stuff and they need a little guidance they need a little help or they don't have people skills so Nick is a pastor at a church here, and Nick provides skate ramps. He's got a pump track. He goes around to the local juvenile hall. He takes the kids that are doing well at the juvenile halls, and, and he'll, you know, he'll offer them through the juvenile hall, hey, we'll come in. We're going to spend two hours with you, and we're going to teach you how to skate. We're going to teach you how to ride a bike. We're going to teach you how to work on a bike. We're going to give you some skills, right? 
And then once you're out of this space or once, once you find yourself in a better spot, come to us and we're going to provide help for you with your education. They've got tutoring after school. They've got a, a great sign language program. They've got a great program with the kids, just getting them off the street and giving them a place to go after school in that dead zone time where most kids are out getting in trouble, causing grief. And he's giving them some real life skills, right? And, and letting them have fun and be kids all at the same time. And, and I think every community has some something like that, whether it's your local PAL, whether it's your local Boys and Girls Club, you know, you've every city, every town has a group that could use some help, that could use some support. I know we've funneled some kids into Nick's group and that's helped them tremendously, you know, that, that were at risk, that did have some issues, you know, um, with education, with the time, mom and dad both work, you know, and it, it, it's really helping these community-based groups help the community is what it's all about, right? You know, so anytime you can, you can jump in and, and to just shout them out, you know, you don't got to give them financially, you don't got to do, shout them out, make them, make that, make the other kids aware of them, make the other people around you aware of them, make the yeah. other adults aware of them, you know, it is a tremendous help to, to a lot of these groups. And it, it also, for us as human beings, right, I don't want to see anybody suffer, I don't want to see anybody have to go through any undue grief in life, right? So if that's an avenue we can help push them towards or help them with, man, support that. Support your communities. Because in the long run, it's where we live. You know, it's 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 our town. It's it's up to us to make a difference. And I mean every one of us, you know, and whether it be small or whether it be big, if everybody pitches in, it makes a huge difference, you know. Yeah, I agree a hundred percent. And you know, even if you're not, even if you're not organizing a riot, even if you're not uh, involved with, in, you know, bringing the community's um, needs into uh, your own personal space where you can help out with that. If you are on ride outs, if you're an OG or an older guy or, or someone who, you know, has a little bit of presence, you can be a, a little bit of a, I hate to say role model, but it's kind of like a role model, you know, the way you carry yourself, how you do things. Because I can guarantee you, like my kids, my son, they're looking up to guys like the SE crew, the, you know, D blocks, the maniacs and, and, and any of the, the guys who they can just sit there and watch. Like, I want to do what that guy's doing. I want to be, I want to wear that Jersey. I want to do this. You know, I want to, uh, I want those skills. I want to, you know, maybe I should check this guy on what he's doing in life and kind of follow that. So, you know, there's a lot of different avenues that we can help our communities and, and show up, like you said, support different groups, go to different ride outs, and just, you know, basically kind of just be that type of person that, you know, as all, you know, act, have some integrity, act as if someone's watching you at all times. And maybe those eyes are just, you know, 10, 11, 12 years old. And they're going like, oh, I know that guy. And, and, you know, hopefully what you're doing is, is making a positive influence on a younger, younger dude or a younger girl or, or even a peer, you know? So, uh, you know, I got to say shout out to you for, for being involved with that because you are helping your communities. You're helping the folks that show up to the rides and you're helping, you know, you got other cities going, Hey man, we want you here. So, you know, yeah, we're, we're working on a little secret collab right now with the, with a group down in uh, Southern California and uh, look out guys, here we come. You know, we're, <laughs> we're about to do something up there. They're going to come or down there. They're going to come up here and do a little something, something. And we're all going to yeah. work together just to make this thing bigger. And, and that's really, you know, the community involvement with our, within our own bike lab community, you know, and helping each other out. But, you know, additionally, when you look at this thing as a whole, we started doing this because we're old and we wanted to feel like a kid again, right? And I drug my kid along, my kids along, and made them do this, you know, and at first when Keith started doing this, he was, you know, he's a savant when it comes to video games. He really is. He reminds me a lot of your boy, by the way. I, I really got a thrill out of talking to your boy the other day <laughs> out there in, in San Lorenzo at, at the Santo Sunday. Um, it, it was tremendous because I see a lot of Keith in him at about that age. You know, that, that's, that twinkle in his eye and he's just taking everything in and he's yep. so excited. But Keith wanted to play video games. I mean, he's really good at video games. 
And once he started riding bikes and I'm dragging him all over the countryside riding bikes, the, the, the appetite for the video games went away. The appetite to ride the bikes is there where it's almost all he wants to do, you know, and to watch him evolve and grow. I mean, he's a big kid. So a lot of these skills, some of these smaller kids have, they, it comes naturally because they weigh a hundred pounds, right? <laughs> and and, and <laughs> when they fall down, there's only a hundred pounds hitting the ground. When you're as big as Keith and 200 pounds is hitting the ground, it hurts a lot more. I mean, you know, <laughs> Dude, and I could tell you. Yeah, I relate. <laughs> the, the, yeah. First, the first Santa Cruz ride out I went on, Keith, and I, I've talked to Keith about this, he wrecked in front of me. He went down. And I had to bunny hop him, dude. And I was like, oh, no, I might eat it too. Like when Keith fell, I'm like, dude, Keith's a, Keith's a big boy, man. I mean, yeah. even for a, a young man, he's got – he's a grown man's body, bro. Because oh, yeah. I, it was either I'm going to hit him and I'm going down or I'm going to bunny hop over him. And he got, he got, you know, wormed out, swerved out and, and someone hit his bike and he went down and I'm like, Oh no. So I totally get what you're saying. And, no, and, and that kid worked <laughs> his ass off to get where he was, you know, and, and that was kind of, you know, I know it's a little off, but that goes back to this whole SE crew thing and what Todd's got going on and what this SE crew is doing. This SE crew is loaded top to bottom. These guys are killers on this crew, but they're kind killers. Everyone on that crew has integrity. Everyone on that crew is a kind soul. Everyone on that crew brings something to the table other than their skills on the bike. They, they have the ability to connect, to work with others, and, and make people feel good. And they don't alienate people. And that was the one thing that this hoedown that Todd just did really brought together for me is seeing that is how these guys from all over the country could come together. They're one cohesive unit, each one of them individual, each one of them individual sets of skills, mm -hmm. but all of them have a kind heart. All of them are there because of what they do for the bike life community, not what they do on the back of a bike. Right. And, and that's huge. That's huge. And, and that's a big shout out to SE Racing. A big shout out to Todd Lyons for recognizing that. Not just recognizing the talent, but recognizing the character of these people that they're putting on their bikes and that are ambassadors for their brand that are actually literally um, making our bike life better, making our communities better. You 100%, know, 100%. I couldn't agree more. I mean, you look at the, the thing, because people like talk to Craig and I all the time, like, oh man, how do I get sponsored? How do I get sponsored? You know, and it, it's, I, Craig and I kind of have like the same, the same outlook on it. It's, it's not like you ride good. That's great, man. There's, there's 10 people that ride better than you that you just don't know about. It's not, it's not necessarily going to be who's got the best skills. It's going to be who, who can build this and carry on a legacy because that, if we go just straight SE crew, for example, like you put on that SE jersey, you're putting on Stu Thompson's jersey. You're carrying on that legacy that, that he started and Scott started. And so, you know, you're not going to be out at the, the AM, PM or the 7-Eleven, like shoplifting some candy bars because you don't want to wait in line. Um, you know, you're not going to be out there just dissing kids. It, it means you're going to sign autographs. It means you're going to hang out and answer questions about, you know, giving kids advice. You're going to take the shirt off your back and the hat off your head and make friends with a kid that you're going to know for the next, you know, 10 years of your life. You know what I mean? Like what, what you experience or what your son experienced and you, you by proxy, right. With D blocks. I mean, that's your example. Obviously you have to be good at bikes, but it's what you do off your bike that really makes you shine. And so I, I mean, that's, that's something I want to really kind of, you know, shine a spotlight on and answer that question for a lot of people to talk about sponsorships. Sponsorship means, you know, it, there's a lot of responsibility that comes with that. It's not just, I can do sick combos. Because you know what? There's a lot of people that you just, they don't have an Instagram, but will combo your ass off in a heartbeat. You just don't know who they are. It's not about who's got the top skill. It's who's got the top skill and can promote and can carry on a legacy uh, for a brand. 
Yeah, and that's a good point, Isaac, because look at that team. I mean, Tom brought it up, the SC crew um, with Todd Lyons at the helm. But look on the team. You've got guys like Damon, Matt Ricard. You know, you've got OG vets within that group, within that crew, who are also, you know, being the, the guys who are, are, you know, making sure that, you know, even the younger dudes of that crew – kind of have you know someone to i wouldn't say to look up to but it kind of like is to look up to you know they're like cohesive and they're leaders yep. and in each one of those kids if we want to call them kids you know like like tom said they're bringing something to the table we know that they wouldn't be on the team wearing that jersey if they didn't but the point you made isaac about they wear St thompson's jersey they wear bright hops jersey they wear lions jersey and all those legacies right toby henderson and henderson you know your man um, that's not only a lot of, a lot of weight to carry, but it's such a, it's an honor too. Yep. And, and you got to carry that torch. You know, you want to pass it on lit, not, not extinguished. 100%, no, yeah, absolutely right. And, you know, and, and on this sponsorship thing, I'm kind of glad you guys brought that up because we get asked that question a lot. Right. And I will tell you the quickest way not to get sponsored, ask for it. You know, you've got to be, you've got to be somewhat cocky. You've got to be somewhat outgoing, you know, as far as I'm good. I know I'm good. I know what I can do, but you also have to be extremely humble, right? And, and willing to give. And that's what I don't think a lot of these, these guys and gals get today is that it's, it's, it's more selfish motivation is why they want to get sponsored today. They want the gimme, 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 right? I need that bike. I need that shirt. I need that this. I need that whatever it is they're trying to get sponsored. I saw this kid's post the other day and it made me laugh. He had a Gatorade or something in his hand and he says, everybody go tag Gatorade because he took a picture wheeling with this stupid and it's like, dude, you want to know how not to get sponsored? Right there. They don't care about your shitty picture holding their can of stuff, right? <laughs> it, it, you're self-serving, right? You're not, you're not serving their brand. When, they, when a company sponsors you, what they're doing is they're looking at you to be an ambassador for their brand. They're looking at you to, like Isaac said, carry that torch in a good way. They want you to represent well. They don't want you, they're not doing it Look at it like this. They're paying you. That bike is payment. They're not giving you anything. And, or that shirt, that apparel is payment. You, you're not, they're not giving you something. They're paying you to represent their brand in the best way possible, not selfishly, right? And I think that's where a lot of people get lost is they're so selfish or, and, and I don't even know that they think they're selfish. They just want it so bad. I need to be sponsored. I need to be sponsored. It's not about that. It's about do the right thing every time and those opportunities will come. And if you really want that opportunity to come, you have to put yourself out there and you have to put yourself in the place where those opportunities are. You can't sit back on Oak Street and wherever USA filming yourself doing wheelies going, I'm the greatest ever doing these combos and expect somebody to, that they're going to notice you from that. You need to get out. You need to go ride. You need to go get involved with the groups that are doing the rides. You need to go out, put yourself in front of the Todd Lions. Todd's doing a hoedown. Guess where I'm going to be? I'm going to be riding and I'm going to be riding mm -hmm. next to Todd if that's what I really want. And I'm going to show him by my presence, by what I bring, and by my professionalism that I'm somebody you should pay attention to. And once you got their attention, you might get a chance at getting sponsored. Probably not. You know, that's such a thin window and such being sponsored isn't as glamorous as it sounds, <laughs> right? There's, there's a lot of don'ts that come with the do's. As a matter of fact, I can tell you from looking at the, the agreement, the, the crew, you know, do's and don'ts, there's about two pages of don'ts compared to one page of do's, right? And they really want you to go out there, represent the brand, and represent yourself well, right? Don't be selfish. Don't be, you know, 
you've got to do it for the love of what you're doing, not because you want to get sponsored. That's not how you're going to get sponsored, right? If you're doing it because you love what you're doing and you put yourself in the place where those opportunities are going to be, you've got a pretty strong chance. If you're just doing it because you're, you, I think I need to be sponsored. I can do more combos than that guy. You're probably not going to get sponsored, right? It's just, well, not yeah. And that, and you know, it's like, I'm not saying, you know, I've seen kids get sponsored. I've seen, and I say kids, I mean, there's all age ranges, but it's like, if, if you do make it, if you get a sponsorship and, and it's a simple flow, okay, mm -hmm. let's say, let's say they're going to send you out a, a couple shirts and maybe a, you know, uh, whatever, whatever they're going to send you. And it, you know, I've seen it where there'll be guys that'll, they'll get their shirts and stuff and then they're done. It's like, okay, I got the shirt. I'm done stick with it, man, you know, represent that company. Like you were saying, um, you've got a lot more responsibility than just wearing a shirt or getting a shirt. Yeah, it's That's more not... than just a hashtag and an Instagram post. Yeah, man. And <laughs> Isaac, I mean, how many times have you seen it? It's like, all right, I got my whatever. Now, you know, you'll never see me hashtag them again. You'll never see me, you know, wear this again. I don't know. I mean, I'm not saying that's like that always, but it's out there like that, you know, and, and you, you got to take it further, man. If you want to, if, if your end game is to stay on a level that, you know, you're getting attention because of your, your character, your integrity, your skills, the way you carry yourself, your media presence and all that. Don't just quit when you get the damn free pair of grips and go, okay, I got my grips. I'm good. You know, if you, and if you do great, get out of the, get out of the game and let another kid or another person who can step in and really is hungry to take their, their game to the next level and take these companies with them and these companies want to be with them, let that kid have the chance, you know? Yeah. I, I tell these kids all the time. I tell these guys all the time when they, when they ask, I, you know, and, and even the ones that are sponsored, you know, I talk to a lot of writers, a lot of people all the time. And, and uh, some of these guys are young. Some of them are a little older. Some of them are older cats like me as well. But, but my advice to everybody, you know, that, that does catch a ride, even if it's something as simple as a, as a flow contract, right? It will go away faster than it came. <laughs> you, know, if you, yeah. don't, you know, if you don't do what you're supposed to do, it'll go away faster than it came. How long do you want this ride to last, right? And, and that's really what it comes down to is what are you going to put into it? What are you willing to do? Because they're not paying you because you're pretty. They're not paying you because they think you're cool, Wheelie, and they're paying you because they want you to represent their brand, right, at the end of the day. Yep, 100%. Well, Tom, man, I really appreciate you hanging out with us. Uh, I appreciate all the insight into, you know, the ride outs, organizing ride outs, your advice on that. I mean, we, I, I'm pretty confident saying you have the premier ride out um, that, that is that, you know, there's the weekly ride outs that are really big in LA, but man, if you think about a one time, I mean, when I first got into to big bikes, uh, the first thing I told my wife was like, we're going to Santa Cruz. <laughs> like that's the one we're going to go to. And, and, you know, she's on board because pizza, my heart, which was right. like, you know, there's that, that, that was going for me, but like you do host the premier, the premier ride out in the country. Um, and so we appreciate you, man, just sitting down and, and just talking with us about how that, how that originated and, and how people can do that. And, and the do's and don'ts, you know, are you open if people have questions? Are you open to people like just sending you messages about it or? Oh, hundred percent, hundred percent, Isaac. Yeah, I, I love to help people. And, and that's one of the things that's made, um, makes me feel good, right? You know, is talking about this. I've, you know, there's no secret to the sauce. It's a consistency, like Craig was saying earlier, you know, do what you say you're going to do with everybody and, and, and really plan what you want, you know. Um, and, and thank you for all the kind words about, you know, the premier ride out. I, I feel like we've created something very special here in Santa Cruz. Um, I, I don't think I think other rides look to what I do, look to what we do now. And I, I've seen it. I, I mean, I've seen it immediately after our rides. It changes other people's rides and how they approach it. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm trying to bring, you know, each time I want to do it a little bigger, a little better, more of a circus attitude. Hell, next year I might have fire dancers out there. I don't know. But, yeah. you know. <laughs> do it, Tom. <laughs> I'm just saying, you know, circus tents, midgets, the whole bit. Um, it, it's, 
it's about having fun. It's about bringing an experience, and and really that's what we we we've, we've strived to do here, um, is is bring a different level and show people that there is no box. You know, there's there's a there's a kind of a general idea of how to do it, but you can do anything that makes you feel good, that makes other people feel good and makes people happy, right? And you don't know what that is until you try it. 100%. And that's why we're, we're open to experiment. And you know, um, well, I got you, I hope you guys don't mind. I'd like to give a couple shout outs. Yeah, no, go I, got, I, have more, I have one more question actually for you. Yeah, uh, go ahead. Like I have one more, like, um, what what would you say like if if I'm looking at like Santa Cruz Maniacs and what you're doing, what does the next five years look like? How do you know you've been successful? How do I know we've been successful? We're going to be successful. If you look back five years from now, so let's say let's say twenty 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 five, right? And you mm -hmm. look back and you go, this is where we're at. What what does success look like for you there? That I put smiles on people's faces. That I, I gave people experiences that they may never have had and that I may have changed somebody's life for the good. Right. That's, that's really it. That's, that's my success. I don't care how many people we have show up at these rides, to be honest with you. Um, you know, the first year I was really driven by, I, I, I needed 400 people. <laughs> I mean, I really did. You know, I, ha I had to go bigger. I had, I had to have something to, to, to feel good about. Um, you know, the next year, I think we did a little over 700. The year before last, you know, we were over 1,000. At, at 1,000 people, I was scared, man. I, I looked <laughs> like, holy crap, what did I do? Um, you know, and then this year, going into this thing, I know COVID changed a lot of things and um, made things a, a lot bigger necessarily. It, it got people outside, which is a really good thing. It made people active again. You know, people got tired of sitting on their couches. People got tired of staring at that damn TV. And they started getting outside. Go try to buy some bike tubes right now. You can't get them, right, because of COVID. Go try so, to buy a bike. Right, right. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> so this year, we were, you know, going into it, I knew we were going to have 1,000 people. I knew that was our number, you know, bare minimum. We were going to do 1,000. And when we ordered shirts, like the beautiful shirt you're wearing right there. Yeah, check um, it out. There, right. <laughs> By the way, Jimbo Phillips artwork, that is just as, as cool as it gets. And that is Keith. So all of our artwork, the, the one behind you is a, is one of our kids, Joe Van Heikren. Um And um, what we do is we take a, a, a picture. That's a picture of one of our kids, Joe Van Heikren, jumping at Harvey West Park. The one on your shirt's Keith Wheelian and Campbell. And we turn it over to a local skateboard artist, in this case, and, and, and the shirts this year was from Jimbo Phillips, a world famous artist. And we let them do their spin on it, right? Here, here's the image, put your funk on it, you know? Give us that rat rod kind of feel, you know? We like that punk rock kind of skate feel here. But so, but going into this, we knew it was gonna be big and we ordered 300 shirts. And I was like, that's a lot of shirts. You know, that's a lot of shirts. I don't know if we're going to sell 300 shirts. And two days before the ride, I called up our apparel company, Lifted, Lifted Farms Apparel. And, and I said, I made a huge mistake. We didn't make enough shirts. And, and Sean over at Lifted goes, a little bit late now, buddy. You know, and I'm like, I think we need another 300 shirts, mm -hmm. honestly. We sold out of those first 300 shirts within 25 minutes of setting up their booth out there, you know? Um, but we never expected the crowd we had this year. So moving forward, you know, down the line, Isaac, you know, um, I think this thing continues to grow. I think what we're doing here is, is really taking a life of its own, you know? And I, I see bigger and better, you know, rides here in Santa Cruz. I see more and more people showing up, but I see that happening everywhere, you know, and, and like we did down at the SE Hoedown, there was over a thousand people that showed up to that with a week's notice. Um, you know, these rides are getting bigger and bigger, more and more. Now that people are out active, I think our whole culture, our whole bike life scene is just going to continue to blossom, continue to grow and continue to expand. And you're going to see more and more companies 
getting involved in this. Um, you're going to see more and more as you have already. I mean, every bike company in the world is trying to jump in the game, right? You have apparel companies jumping in. You have everybody now, we're on the radar, right? We got companies like Bump Box jumping in. They want to be a part of it, right? You've got lifted farms jumping in. You've got you know, cookies jumping in. You've got all kinds of these companies that you would have never thought of that want to be a part of what we're doing, our little thing, right? Our little thing's not our little thing anymore. And, you know, five years from now, what I hope this evolves to is something that anywhere we want to go in the United States or even the world, this is going to be acceptable, that they're going to, they're going to appreciate what we do when we come into their town and they're going to, they're going to welcome us with open arms. That's what I see in five years. That's amazing. Well, hey, thank you so much, man. You have, you have a beautiful soul, brother. Like it comes across, you can just tell your heart's in the right spot and, and you're doing it for the right reason. So that, that, if you're listening to this podcast, if you're watching it, um, take, take heed of that too. It's not just the, what you do, but your intentions behind it. Uh, I think the universe will bless whatever your intentions are. So Tom, thank you so much, man. I appreciate hanging out with us. Uh, I can't wait for next year. I'll definitely be out. Uh, you know, COVID's what kept me home this year. And so uh, I'm looking forward to, to riding with you guys and uh, having a good time out there in Santa Cruz. Craig. Tom, so out. you got it, man. Tom, uh, I know you want to give some shout outs and I'm going to give you that opportunity in a second, but I'm going to just piggyback on what Isaac said. Um, you know, I started talking to you, I think I first damned you about two or three years ago. And, and one of the things I wanted to, was a, was a sprocket or something, uh, one of the Santa Cruz ride out sprockets. And you were like, right away, I got you, dude. You didn't, we didn't know each other, but you, you know, you, you, you're, you're, you're the most approachable. You're, you're, you're like Isaac said, you, your, your soul is, is good. You, you know, you're, you're there for people to talk to. It doesn't matter if you've never laid eyes on someone before you're like, what's up brother, how you doing? You know, and with all the chaos going around during the ride outs, when you're out there, it seems like, you know, anybody that comes up to you, it's like, I got a, I got a few seconds for you. What, what's going on? How are you? You know, man. So I want to say shout out to you, dude. You're one of the coolest dudes I know. You run the best ride out I know. Um, and, and I'm sure a whole bunch of others want to, you know, emulate what they're, what you're doing in the, at their location. But man, thanks. Thanks to you, man. Big shout out. And I, I'm, I'm so like appreciative that I know you. And, uh, you know, I can't say enough good things. I'm trying. <laughs> <laughs> I really am. But, you know, man, thank you. Thank you for, you know, providing all the, the happiness and joy of being together with people on bikes and, and doing it on a massive scale in such a small little awesome town of Santa Cruz. Um, I can't wait to come out and hang out with you again next year. And, you know, and I know I'll see you in between. But, you know, thanks for putting that on, brother. I really appreciate you. I'm, I'm stoked to know you. And uh, thank you again for, for coming on the podcast tonight and, and letting people know who you are, the guy, you know, behind the scenes and, and, and for putting yourself out there and just, you know, helping everyone out, man. Thanks, Tom. So oh, you, you, you guys are all welcome. Out, and and thank you for all the kind words, Craig, Isaac. I, I can't tell you enough how it, it embarrassing, man. You almost made me blush. You know? <laughs> <I'm> just, ah. <laughs> but no, it truly, it means a lot to me that I have that effect on people. I, I really do it out of the kindness of my heart. And, and I really do want people to be happy around me. You know, that's, dude, look, we, we've got one choice in life, be happy or be miserable, right? And I would rather be happy. And I'd rather people around me be happy. Life's so much better that way, you know? Um, I, I will tell you, it's been a pleasure getting to know you, getting to know your boy. I'm telling you, man, that, that, that sparkle in his eye the other day just got me. <laughs> you know, I, I could just see it, you know? And then, you know, with Isaac, knowing that, that he spent some time in Modesto where I grew up, you know, at B93 doing that, you know, I, I used to listen to that station, I ain't gonna lie. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to Cousin Cletus. <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> so, you know, it, it's an honor to be on your show. It's an honor to be able to be a part of this bike life in general. Um, I never thought this was going to turn out like this. You know, I, I've, I've been optimistic about it the whole time, but at the end of the day, this has grown beyond my wildest imagination here in Santa Cruz, in, in the U.S., you know, all over Northern California. We, we have probably the strongest bike life scene there is. 
in Northern California here. You know, I, I have got nothing but love for SoCal, baby. You know, those guys, they, they got it going on down there. They've got the culture. You know, we've really got something special going on up here with our bike life. You know, it, it's really brought NorCal together again on the back of a bike. So th that makes me happy to see and to know that I've had a little part to do with that even makes me happier, right? You know, and I will tell you, if it weren't for companies like SE Racing, Todd Lyons, you know, Todd, you believed in me from day one. You believed in what we were doing. You, you, you put your neck out there. You put your pocketbook out there. You know, you flew those cycle squat boys out. You know, um, you helped create this. And you, 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 you backed me when, when uh, you didn't have any reason to. And that, that was really cool. You know, um, JT Racing, I, I can't say enough, you know, about Lewin and JT and where they're going. Um, these guys are just uh, amazing. The vision, you know, some brands get into this because they see the dollar signs and some brands get into this because they see the culture and the heritage. And I will tell you that JT racing is in this 100% because of the culture and the heritage and they're paying homage to their roots and where they came from and where this is going. Um, you know, locally we've got, other groups, you know, here like Rogue Boys, Jacob Santos. Hey, kudos to Jacob. He's out there killing the game, mm -hmm. giving people what they want, right? You know, and and what a nice guy. I mean, him, his wife, his family, their products, their products are great. You know, and, and he's grassroots, man. He's making this stuff right here in the U.S. You know, he's doing it out of his garage, right? That's the American dream right there, baby. And he's a good-looking dude, man. He's, he's yeah, not, not a bad-looking guy with that. Right. Hair. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I will tell you that uh, the girls in the game, I got to give shout-out to all the girls in the game. You know, my daughter, when we first started doing this, Kaya used to think, Dad, like one of the only girls out here, you know. And now when I go to these rides, I, I see people like Irie BMX girl out there. I see Adrian Illusion out there. You know, uh, Melody, you know, uh, Norma from down south, she's been doing it for a while, killing it. Um, you know, it, it's, it's wonderful to see across the board, all the women getting involved, all the women, young girls out there. I see dads with their daughters out there. Big shout out to the dads with the daughters, man. That, that is so amazing to me. Bring Woo! your kids out, show them, <laughs> show them what this is all about, right? Because they're as much of a part of this as anybody. The wives that support all of us, you know, my wife, Krishna. She puts up with more shit than anybody I know because I'm about the craziest <laughs> people you'd ever meet when it comes right out time, you know? And she gets mad. She's like, you don't tell me shit. Well, honey, it's all in my head. You know, <laughs> just follow along. But, no, she does a great job supporting me. Rich and Adriana come out and support. Jamal here locally. You know, all the local maniacs here that come out and support and help us do this. Um, you know, our guys over the hill in San Jose, Ride Roots, Darren Devin Chenzi, you know, Darren, he's been holding it down there. This is three years, man. If you guys don't know about Seatown Tuesdays and Campbell, go check out Darren. Darren's got it going on, you know, him and Kevin, Kevin Stone. Kevin's my guy, by the way. So those guys help me put these rides on. They come out, they support. Kevin's always in the front of my pack. He's my lead guy, you know, and he does – Everything I ask him, I torture that poor guy, you know, coming up to these rides. So big shout out to Kevin, his family for putting up with everything we do. Um, down south, we've got Felice. We've got the Familia, you know, Santa Barbara. I love seeing people come up. You know, Felice has come to me over the years for advice, which I've, I've never turned him down on. And I, and I love sharing my knowledge with him, with anybody. You know, you got the BMX Rad Rides guys down there. You know, and that surprise I was telling you about, 24, 26, 29 cruisers. Look out, man. We got something cooking. It's going to be big, you know. Adam at A1 Graphics down there and I've been – we got plans. We got plans, and, and this is going to be fun, you know. And we're, we're just going to turn this thing up to the next notch, you know. And uh, I just got to say, the guys in the industry here, whether it's Haro, whether it's Throne, whether it's SE, GT, Sunday – Whoever you're riding, just ride a bike, man. I don't care what you're riding. Come out and hang out with us. You know, I mean, it doesn't matter. Get involved, get out, get on a bike. It's awesome. All my PA guys out there that are killing the game, you know who you are. 
keep doing it. Keep giving us stuff to buy. Keep giving us stuff to improve our bikes, to make our experiences better. So really, thank you, thank you, thank you. Can't say enough about Big Bike BMX. You guys are killing the game, man. It really, truly, I love your podcast. I love what you're doing. I love how you're bringing the community together. Thank you. Man, we sure appreciate that. And uh, thanks again, Tom, for being here from the bottom of our heart, our, our hearts, uh, Isaac and myself and all of our listeners out there. And just to wrap this up, everybody, thank you for showing up again to another rad episode of Big Bike BMX. You know, this is 80s BMX Craig, and we have Isaac in the house here for Big Bike BMX. And if you like what we're doing, if you are stoked on all these awesome guests that just keep on showing up here and giving us such an awesome time and, and hanging out with us, go to YouTube, click that sub subscribe button if you haven't already. Go ahead and leave a comment, like it. If you want to head over to Spotify or Apple Podcasts and catch us on the stream there, we'd love to have you there too. If you're out riding your bike at work, hanging out, whatever you're doing on the go, you don't have to miss a second of Big Bike BMX and all the awesomeness that we're going to keep bringing to you guys. And we appreciate each and every one of you with all the support that you guys have been giving us and continue to give us. And for that, we love you and we're out and let's wrap this up, Isaac. Just like Craig said, man, I love you all. Thanks for taking time out of your day to listen to three old dudes talk about what we love in BMX and hopefully uh, you feel part of the love because if you ride a bike, you're family with, uh, with all of us. So on behalf of Tom, Craig and I, we love you. We appreciate you. And most importantly, we can't wait to ride with you. Take care. Have a wonderful week and be safe. Ba -ba -da -ba. Ba -ba -ba.